revisiting Stephen King's The Mist. All creatures explain. Carrie, The Shining, It, Cujo, and more. Stephen King's books have been adapted over and over again into terrifying movies, television specials, and series. This guy continues to freak out his fans, and even they can't seem to ever get enough. Now, Frank Darabont's 2007 horror thriller The Mist is often highly ranked among Stephen King fans for its largely faithful adaptation of the literary horror master's 1980 novella. And that's what this video is going to be all about. Well, not entirely, actually, because we're only going to talk about the best bits. Yes, we're talking about the monsters and various other creatures. So, hello, folks. Welcome back to Factholic. And today, let's revisit Stephen King's The Mist and take a look at all the various creatures and monsters that appear in the film, the TV series, as well as those from the novella, too. Although, before we begin, do note that the list of creatures is based in alphabetical order, so don't expect any power rankings or size ranking here. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Number 1. Arachna Lobster so, the first creature from the mist in our list today is the arachnid lobster. It's a fairly large predator which kills its victims by cutting them in half with its claws or biting their heads off. In the film, the arachnid lobster is roughly two stories tall, with fleshy, not entirely insectile skin. Now, I won't explain the whole anatomy of the monster, but to sum it up, the arachnid lobster, as its name suggests, is a humongous lobster-scorpion hybrid-looking creature. Although, from some angles, you might even see the resemblance of a mantis. A really giant one at that, too. The arachnid lobster is by far the second largest creature seen in the film, although the novella version was still larger. Number 2. Behemoth So, next up, it's the behemoth, also known as the impossibly tall creature. It's a gigantic, six-legged beast of a monster. What's interesting about this monster, though, is the fact that the behemoth never harms any living thing and doesn't even appear to be hostile in nature, but it's said to be larger than anything that ever lived on Earth. Now, its lack of hostility could be due to its sheer size because, honestly, it simply doesn't notice anything beneath it. Its very size is a hazard and was enough to frighten the survivors into thinking that there was nothing any better ahead of them. Number 3. Giant Spider Creatures Okay, so now we have the giant spider creatures, of which we only saw their burning corpses and nothing much, but that was enough for us to find out that these were large spider-like creatures, much like Grey Widowers, and each one was about the size of a car. When the mist clears to reveal a convoy of military vehicles, soldiers and survivors driving through a road in the forest, the burning corpses of these creatures were seen at the edges of the road, as I've mentioned previously. Now, it can be presumed that perhaps they attacked the convoy due to the survivor's unmasked scent, but were easily incinerated by the soldier's flamethrowers. Number 4. Grey Widowers Grey Widowers are deadly spider-like predators about the size of a dog, which have the ability to produce corrosive spider webs that can burn through materials like clothing and flesh. Now, both in the novella and film, the Grey Widowers can produce corrosive web strands and fire them as projectiles but they can also lay eggs in living hosts. These eggs will appear as thousands of bulging boils on the host's skin, which each burst open after about a day to release the new hatchlings. Man, that's nasty. Number 5. Green Fly Now, this is one of the creatures that hasn't made an appearance in the film. The green fly is a large, green, dragonfly-like insect. It's a light on the hood of David's scout and, shortly after, flew off through the mist, out of sight. The green fly is described as having long, clear wings and resembling a twisted and deformed green dragonfly. Any idea why all these insects from the mist are deformed and large? Drop down your theories in the comments below. Number 6. Killer Kite Another monster that only appeared in the novella and was not present in the film, the Killer Kite, as its name suggests, is a giant kite-like creature glimpsed flying around the mist over David's scout when the car was on Kansas Road. The killer kite is described as a nightmarish, half-seen living kite through the mist. This beastly kite is depicted as having three webbed appendages tapering into tendrils which make up its body, giving it a resemblance to a kite or a crucifix. Number 7. Leeches 
Leeches are a type of monster, tiny ones, in the mist and appear in Season 1, Episode 5, The Waiting Room. And yes, they are actual leeches, but lethal ones at that. Leeches from the mist tend to travel in swarms of hundreds rather than alone and somehow seem similar to the swarms of flying leeches that Pennywise assumed as one of his forms he used to kill Patrick Hockstetter with another Stephen King novel. It. Number 8. Owl Creature So, the owl creature is basically an owl from the mist that appears in Season 1, Episode 6, The Devil You Know. And it's worth mentioning that the Mist's TV adaptation replaces monsters with insects and religious fanatics. But this owl creature is an oddball of sorts. We saw the owl creature appearing when Kevin was strapped down a hospital gurney two minutes after being exposed into the mist. Number 9. Tarot Buzzard One of the nocturnal creatures of the mist, tarot buzzards are pterodactyl-like monstrous creatures. While tarot buzzards will only attack humans if they get very close or if there's no other food source, they appear to attack and devour scorpion flies on sight. In the film, tarot buzzards have dark pinkish skin, pale gray eyes, double jointed legs and four pterodactyl like wings, two in place of arms, two on their backs. Well, in the novella, the tarot buzzards are albino creatures, described as nightmarish and similar to the movies being pterodactyl-like with long, membranous wings and a heavy, hooked beak. Number 10. Scorpion Flies Now you already know that these are the prey of the tarot buzzards, but besides that, scorpion flies are plump, flying creatures about 2-4 to four feet long. They're also nocturnal, attracted to light at night, and in the film, living in what appear to be hives during the day. The scorpion flies in the film don't have eye stalks have hard, purple, segmented shells and resemble a cross between a wasp and a scorpion. Their stingers also contain a neurotoxin which causes massive swelling and suffocation in minutes. I'm telling you, this is one hell of a fly. Number 11. Shadow Creature So, the shadow creatures seem like the mists take on the Dementors from Harry Potter, because the creature's appearance and behavior clearly resemble those of the Dementors. The shadow creature is a monster appearing in the Mist TV series, and the creature appears to be made out of pure shadow, with few observable features other than a vaguely human-like form. It makes sounds similar to screeching and growling, and appears to even have the ability to teleport. Moreover, this monster has a rather fascinating method of killing which involves latching onto a victim's face and infecting them with shadow, killing the victim. I prefer to call it the shadow infection. Okay, I know that sounds lame, but I still prefer to call it that. Number 12. Tentacles from Planet X The tentacles from Planet X, as nicknamed by Norton's group, are the limbs of an unseen creature in the mist and are known for killing Norm in the storage room. In the novella, the tentacles from Planet X physically resemble those of a very large squid or octopus, and they have mouths in place of suckers which they use to consume prey as they envelop it. They also have fleshy pink flesh on their undersides and slaty gray flesh on the rest of themselves. However, in the film, in addition to the mouths and resemblance to squid tentacles, the tentacles from Planet X also have claws lining their sides and a slit-like mouth near the tip. They also seem to be able to emit high shrieking sounds from their mouths, retract their mouths and claws into their flesh, and seem to be a shade of both gray and pink. Another fascinating thing about these tentacles is that when a severed tentacle finally dies, it decomposes into a sizzling black liquid in just a matter of seconds. Number 13. Terrorpede Lucky number 13 brings us the Terrorpede, a giant nocturnal creature of the mist which is seen in the storyboard art for the mist but wasn't in the finished film. The Terrorpede has huge claw-like antenna with red lips supposedly from biting into something. Number 14. The Four Horsemen So, finally, we're nearing the end. Last but not least, we have the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, who made their appearance in Season 1, Episode 7, Over the River and Through the Woods. When Natalie and Father Romanoff face off by walking into the mist to test whether God or nature would spare them, the Four Horsemen show up. Father Romanoff starts praying However, the White Horse of Conquest pulls up their bow and arrow and shoots Father Romanoff, 
piercing the arrow through his body, infecting him with every disease ever known. The four horsemen spare Natalie and run away into the mist, dragging Father Romanoff along as he's tied to the rope of the arrow, screaming in pain. All right, then, there you have it. All the creatures of the mist. Now, before we leave, we'd like to ask you if you'd want to see a detailed video on some of the main monsters of the mist. Do let us know in the comment section below. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to keep watching more videos like these, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, keep watching Factolic.